Okay, so when last we left off, we um, had a bit of a breakdown with the people in the tent near the church. Um, essentially, we went to the church to look around and try and point out um, sniper spots, and we came across a bunch of guys raving it up in a tent. And I'm sort of having an arming about having to look at the church so we could find out what they were, and I decided to be a git and do a little jump cut, so... Uh, the end of that last video could get scrappy. Um, I'm probably going to put both of them up in the same day, or do like a pop five thing, but yeah, here we are. Kimster's ready. We're ready. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand it's shut in front of you. Well, the lock turns easily. You hear a click as the shackle pops open. Lock picking lawyer we ain't. Let's go. Let's go. A great whoosh of air rushes into the dark innards of the church, as though rushing to fill a great vacuum. Um, narrator, in odds, odds, in odds, surely. He pushed. In the heart of the city. Right. What in the actual feckery we got here? Stand by for memes. Oh my god. Huh. Strange stillness fills you as you look ahead. You should walk here, not run. A grotesque wooden figure looks half finished. Hui. More of the forked lightning putty is to outside. Dark beetles? No, ten stomps of mold, forgotten style. Ass. Zoom in on that. I want to say the old late uh, and old lady things. That looks like something good gargoyle or something. Like that. that board is filled with content equations that look recent. Something to do with radio frequencies. Two decks of real real tapes spinning on empty. Portable Harmon while she tape recorder. It's possible it's recording something? Oh, hello. A machine stands in the corner, watched over by the figures on the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. It looks like that machine from the D&D uh, &D radio play place. Another radio computer. Yeah. And this time it's already turned on. He seems cautious about the machine. These machines sometimes harbor traps, he thinks. Alarm systems and the like. Let's be careful. We should leave. I doubt this place bears any connection to the case. Yeah, but this machine looks like the one that's in the uh, Doom commercial area. It's also quite similar to the one we have down at the station. Must be the same model. He inspects the machine's framework. Careful not to touch anything. The one you saw earlier was the Ream Civic. This is the Ream Prefect, a model number RC7024, equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream compatible interim printer. The Ream Prefect is the governmental version of the commonly used Ream Civic model. Although mostly based on the same Government. technology, the Ream Prefect is equipped with better noise attenuation circuits. So we're dealing with something governmental. Okay. Yeah, you're right, let's get out of here. Let's not fuck with that. So, obviously, we're dealing with something high-end. So, definitely not druggies. Oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Get these on my feet. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry I gave my hat away. I should have given them a fucking hat about Oh yeah, those they, they <laughs> piss take aside. Those should look good. Get them on my feet. But we're keeping the um, gloves on. Another figure. Uh, me. A spider had spun its web around this wood carved pillar. Spooner friend. Yeah, but that's what they saw. A crap pane of glass, colourful. Oh, I know what I could have done. I could talk to her about the um, crab creature type thing. Get a bit of spider. 
Frost has drawn flowers in the glass, obscuring the view. Bigger drawn in the frost in the window, depicting a deer. Uh, not seeing anything else to mean with except for the oh, uh. The silence in this part of the church, it's almost palpable. All the shifting matter and shuffling of living things is gone. Nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Maybe if you were to stand in just the right spot, even your footsteps would be completely silent. Wait, I think I still hear something. And then it's gone. Almost all of it. But for the faintest of hums, it seems the sound here is detached from its source somehow, if not blotted out outright. Truly unusual. Sounds like the pale. How do I know what the pale light sounds like? From recordings of the far pale. You've heard them. We all have. You can hardly hear your own breathing. It's a uh, clap. You produce a few muffled thumps. After which the silence feels even more total, somehow. Can you yell as hard as we can? At this point I would start yelling, but no. Your voice is barely audible. Not a howl, but the softest of whimpers. Okay, what's happening? The lieutenant points to his ears and shakes his head. Then he leans closer. Can you hear anything? Uh, almost nothing is beginning to worry me. The church just has strange acoustics, some engineering trick. Maybe the church was designed this way to prevent boisterous activity, singing and dancing on its premises. Maybe they just wanted to discourage singing and dancing. Hmm, could be. He doesn't seem entirely convinced, though. So look at the, bell tower. the orderly rows of ceiling panels become barely visible. Then disappear completely in the about. darkness of the tower <laughs> overhead. I don't know if that's going to change anything or not, but yeah. Basically, it sounds like something fucky is going around with the um. It's, like, it's almost like a sort of like a uh, volume, like a vibration dead zone there, maybe. Uh, how is that challenging? Well, what's up here? It's like there's something moving up there. A shadow has emerged from the tower and it's making its way toward you through all the other shadows. On the ceiling? Yes. The darkness makes the ceiling feel infinitely far away. Follow the movements. It's not a shadow anymore. Becoming more substantial as it gets closer. The shape of an animal descends. Officer, is there something up there? The tenant follows your gaze, attempting to see what you're saying. Oh no. You've lost sight of it. Where did it go? You see something hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. Maybe it's possible to talk to it. The shadow is. A man? A man made of the same stuff as the carpentry of the building. He is studying you intently. What the hell? The crab man. Uh, this is the police. Show yourself. The man leaned forward a little, fixing you with a steady, unreadable gaze, then speaks. Habitual alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, Holmes. But well, don't worry. Everything's gonna be all right. You come to the right place. That accent is Villa Lobos, a peninsula in Mesk and a district in Jamro. There's a sizable contingent of Villa Lobos speaking Mesks in Rivershaw. Right place for what? Here you can receive the mother's love. And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of that bottle. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? I'm put off by this religious stuff, he thinks. And maybe the ceiling climbing, too. It's all very hard to square with the lieutenant's own view of reality. 
Hey, and what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off it already. Shish. I'm a policeman. I need you to talk to you about police things. I don't know anything about the alcohol use. Oh, yeah, sure. You don't know anything about alcohol use. You got it all under control, way. I can smell the control all the way over here. Okay, fine. I'm struggling, but you don't need to lecture me. I know what to do. Not all of it. I was like you once. You don't know all the havoc Albino is wrecking on your mind and your spirit. Necesita parar, homie. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what the ceiling climber is saying. For some reason, I feel like you have a point there. Don't trust me. Trust the mother. I'm only the messenger, Holmes. His voice echoes in the cold air of the church. This is the church of the mother of silence. You are welcome here. He sways gently on the beams, waiting for you to take it all in. You have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. Is he just trying to throw you off your game? Mate, I have read and have thought about some very weird, wonderful shit out there. The mother of silence? Fucking nothing. Whatever it is, <laughs> he's quite confident about it. Just look how gracefully he sways. Yeah, he's going to be a tough boy. Tis to not an act, my liege. Saving per chance, he hath deceived his very self. This man is a zealot. Some ravers want to turn this place into a nightclub. The ones in the tent outside, right? I see him. Think they scared of me. Do they have a reason to be scared of you? Nah, man. They look pretty funny. And I don't harm no one anymore. Anyway. So, so what do you think about it? The nightclub that is. Why not? They wouldn't bother me none. I'm usually way up there, imbibing. Ain't no music on earth that can reach where I go. Might even be nice to have some company. Do you know where the other spooker is? I put to the machines. Other spooker? Oh, esa viejita es muy estudiosa. <laughs> Don't know, Holmes. The Aita is grandma. Wait, so there isn't a person living in the church, and it's, uh, Grandma? So I'm not even going to try to attempt to pronounce that. I believe he's dip, he's dipping into, it sounds Mexican, I apologize, I'm ignorant. So I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be anything like that, I am just a dumb idiot, so yeah. No, I just call her viejita because of her clothes. She's actually quite young. That or maybe not that young. H is just one of the many masks we wear. Amen to that, brother. Um, and you know where she is? That's what I say, Holmes. How can you not know when you both live here? Don't really follow her comings and goings. Just see her typing on her computer now and then. We got different interests. So you got nothing else to tell me? How she looks, what she does, who is she? I'm afraid not, S.A. You just have to wait until she comes back, or... Shrugs. Or search through her radio computer. You must be this crab man then. Never known myself to be a crab. But if that's the name you got for me, I won't stop you from using it. To be fair, you look more like a spider. I always thought of myself more like a flame. Flickering along the rafters and beams. It may be that I gotta work on my technique. That's not the only technique he's working on. Look at those carved sculptures. And is that a satchel of tools over there? Wait, did you carve all these um, pillars? Sure am. Whittling wood used to be something I just did to busy my hands. Now I use those same hands in service of something greater than my own restlessness. That's a nice curve scale there. It's all just for the mother, man. No need to overthink it. What were you before you came a crab man on the woodcutter? I was in a gang way. But my memories of that time are fading. Most of them are already gone. Ugh, I, I know that feeling, man. I, I lost my memory too, but I like it. It's like I get a chance to create a whole new me. Start again from scratch. That's not really the point, I say. You gotta give yourself over to service. Service of the mother, that is. I have a badge and it says fuck you on it. 
Do you remember your name, sir? Tiago's my name. Hey! But those syllables don't mean much to me these days. A name isn't just your identity, but also, so to speak, your place amongst your fellows, your place in the world. I ain't got no use for such a place anymore. Name's Eric. That's just the thing, Holmes. None of that matters. Ignore your hand. His limbs are mere shadow below the ceiling. Oh, okay, thanks. Freaky boy. Fedus! <laughs> okay, so I do have a level five. Uh -huh. What do we need? What was the switch in the? It wasn't Andre, was it? No. Oh, logic, okay. That's all. Right, it's... <laughs> this box is filled with water. A live wire runs directly through it. Could these wires also work as contact microphones? Yes, they can. Someone siphoning an actual current from the outside into this antenna. We're gonna do it. A machine stat the lieutenant doesn't say anything, but you can sense that he doesn't like you meddling with the machine. Let me just have a look at it. You see fluorescent play and print buttons on the keyboard. A hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. The lieutenant says nothing. You see the machine's glowing frame reflected back from his diamond-shaped glasses. You're free to proceed. Good to look into the compartment. Behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments, smoldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side says, in black marker, Log, February to March. This is the machine's filament memory. Press play to access its contents. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good afternoon. Fortress accident on Saint Brune. This is the East Insulindian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? Hey, it's you again. It's the same old woman you spoke with through the radio computer in the doomed commercial area. You want to see me again, how are you? Good, thank you. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? I looked inside the little core. I looked inside the core, but the tape on the filament just says log for every too much. Good. Please repeat the password. Let's look around. There's no use trying to guess the answer. Maybe he knows something. I don't know the password. Received. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Uh, no, thank you. Goodbye, Fortress Accident. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated, revealing fluorescent play and print buttons. Print. Nothing happens. Crap. Uh, let's go ask Tiago, see if there's anything funny to it. Boy, ceiling boy. Oh, hey, Wayne. There's coffee in the back. Oh, wait. I meant the mother's love. <laughs> Get! Oh. Coffee in the back. Something familiar about that. Coffee and stale cookies. Um, have you ever tried to heard the uh, lady say anything to a ready convert? Too many times, essay. You need it for something. Surveys are a good way to fish for personal information. Especially in the name of public safety. Okay, my drama is giant snake now. Thank you for that. I've got a giant snake in my head. I'm going to have that image all day. Um, yeah, it's for a first degree murder investigation, the Martinez. The lieutenant raises his eyebrow, but doesn't say anything. Don't swear, Evato. The password is afterlife death. What do you think of that? Makes me almost pity La Nilita. When I hear it. 
What are you doing here? This is a special place. There's a perforation in the world up there. A way out into nothingness. Not so silly. This church was built around it for purposes of veneration. I circled it, nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, I'd be pure enough to go drink from it directly. These yours? I think they were. A long time ago, I had to shed them like skins to get closer to the center of the silence. You could have them. I don't need them anymore. They look pretty dapper, actually. Uh, who's this mother of silence you're talking about? Oh, that's no simple question, I say. She is one who can be painted or sculpted. But you're trying. She is a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me. But I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes. Looks like and so no one sorry. ever will. Looks like someone's trying to get into fallen London. Um, what would happen if you drink from this perforation? I will be incinerated, but not destroyed. Finally, I won with the state of the world before reality began. That sounds a bit like substitution behavior, no? You know a thing or two about that. Fuck you, Rathrick. Uh, I still don't understand what you're doing in the church. I'm a seraph, Holmes. I sing the mother's glory. Okay, hit me. I am from No Marietti, if that's what you're thinking. And the song I sing is Silent as the Mother. Marietti is a mesque style of music and dance, commonly seen at all manner of festivities, especially weddings. It's delightfully quaint, owing to its peasant origins. He lost his cool there for a moment. Seems you hit some nerve. Should not just switch one rock for another? It's not like that at all, man. It's just faith and joyful service. Too gleeful, those words. He is lying. Not to you. To his very own self. I mean, if you've thought about it from some sort of, like, a uh, hundred mile stair distance faith is kind of a drug i heard that before way and i know i can't convince you on the spot but think when's the last time you woke up from silent communion with a hangover regretting what you did last night sir you've not seen as much internet as i have um let's agree to disagree i know it will take time don't sweat it how did you even find this place? I know it oh. will take time. Don't sweat it. Okay, that was creepy. <laughs> okay. How did you even find this place? Hard to say. I think I did some construction work here. Back when I still had material worries. Up there, I realized what the true purpose of the church was. Been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me now, way. Eh? It didn't belong to me. Right, I've got other questions. The sinewy figure lingers on the wooden beams, blending into the shadows. You've been in here a long time. Do you know why the church was abandoned? Police raid a while back. He responds, his voice going flat. Did you witness it? Not really. Or at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. That's what's so great about the mother. It lets you forget about everything. It looks like he truly doesn't remember. There's a vagueness to his sense of time. Uh, what was that about coffee? I, I think I, like, I heard it somewhere before. Look, man. I'm at liberty to talk about the sacred blaze of the mother's glorious heart, but not about the coffee. I think we're done here, Essay. That was an interesting conversation. However... I'm still not sure how it's relevant to our investigation. Well, at least we know what the uh, password is now. And uh, we can try it with the other place as well. Uh, maybe not The machine's today, keyboard but... is the speaker comes to life. Good afternoon. Votrace, accident, on Saint Brune. This is the East Insulindian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? Let's try this again. I forgot the password this time. Good. Please repeat the password. Afterlife death? Good. I have unlocked the filament. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Is this like the one in the uh, Doom commercial area? 
I have two machines registered to this company name in Martinez. One on Saint-Brune, the other on Rue de Saint-Guilaine. Saint-Brune, that's the church. And Rue de Saint-Guilaine, that's the doomed commercial area. Anything else I can help you with? No, cheers, thank you. Goodbye for trace accident. The machine's keyboard is the printer prints out a long text document with dated paragraphs. It looks a bit like someone's journal. Let's read it. The first entry made on the 4th of February, 51, by an unknown author, is short and concise. Arrived at the church, the door was boarded up, so I used the crowbar to get inside. <laughs> looks like the place has been deserted. Nothing out of the ordinary, but I'll ask around. Need to figure out how to get the electricity in. The lieutenant leans closer, scouring the printout over your shoulder. Just as you finish reading, he looks up, muttering under his breath. Can I point out, this is not, he, he didn't want me to touch this, didn't want to touch this, but as soon as I get into it. 4th of February. That's over a month ago. Whoever set up those machines has been here for quite a while. Do you think it might be connected? Our case? No, I don't think so. It must be some local eccentric. Mm, what's going on? 6th of February, 51. Had a little chat with the local fishermen. Said I shouldn't go near that place. That the church was spooky and ridden with narcotics. It's a little spooky, all right. Still haven't figured out the electricity. See? Even one of the spookers themselves says it's unnerving. See? Ridden with narcotics. Just like Andre said. 7th of February, 51. Finally, got the electricity in. Next on the agenda, a new antenna. I'm thinking Esca series. Something advanced. Why would she need an antenna? Why would anyone need any of this equipment here? He steps on a wire running on the line. It's about to get with his boot. 8th of February, 51. Bought the antenna. Had some problems setting it up. Called Simo for help. Heard the others are back to making art. Drinking somewhere out of town. Sulislav started a rock band again. Lexi has been seen asking money from strangers. But at least the artists have their act together. They're qualified labor. They can get work anywhere. Nice. Graphic design, ads. The programmers are doing fine too. I mean, they're programmers. Wait! The writers though, they're fucked. Is this the game? I just have to find out what caused that data loss and be done with it. Still don't understand how it managed to wipe out the backup. When the backup wasn't even connected to the front. I know. I know. Everyone thinks it's impossible. They say I must be lying. I'm here to set it right. Data loss? It seems like something to do with radio computers. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about them to understand what the author is saying. Well, the author is saying... I don't know if Brian's going to step in at this point, but I'll say it. Um, they're saying that something's caused them to lose their data, which is impossible because the backup was not even connected to the original system. Something about the backup data getting destroyed. Bacon? And how everyone thought it was the author's fault. Let's just keep reading. Artists, programmers, Lexi. Who are these people? I think these people worked in the radio computer games business. The one we saw in the Doom commercial area. They must be our former co-workers. 12th of February, 51. Brought some food from the grocery store. Apparently, there's a strike going on in the harbor. Definitely not happy to see the Martinez people again. Everything's <laughs> now set up in the church. Going to start working tomorrow, 8 a.m. So we're getting close to the case now. The strike. We are nearing the date of the murder. Yep. Keep reading. I'm interested now. I want to know what's that radio anomaly that sent this person here in the first place. That could be them blocking the mercenary signal. 25th of February, 51. I've been sending data up to Lintel for a while now, trying to recreate the data loss, but nothing. Didn't even feel like logging in the disappointment. But I did discover a curious audio-spatial anomaly at the oh. back of the church. I've named it The Swallow. It swallows sound. Need to get some mics. Is she talking about? The talent looks to his right towards the silence. 28th of February, 51. Yes, the first recordings confirm that the swallow is real and I'm not just losing my mind. It's a pillar of silence. 
with a diameter of approximately three meters. Seems like the higher I go, the less I record. This might be a coincidence, or it could be connected to the data loss that led me here. Well, like a point in the church which just wipes out hard drives. The pillar of silence. She is talking about the silence. Is she suggesting it's more than just an architectural quirk? What could it be? The lieutenant doesn't answer. He follows your gaze, studying the basins. The water shines in them. No ripples. Yeah, if there was any sound, they'd pick up on it, yeah. March 51. Some kind of young disco men have appeared next to the church. I've been trying to record the silence to find the epicenter, but now it turns out I've also been capturing the future of dance music. One neo-disco song over and over again. Fortunately, the song is so monotonous, I was able to devise an algorithm to factor it out. The other day, one of the disco men came in. Before I could even say hello, she got scared and left. Good, I don't want anyone distracting me from my work. Oh! That disco man must be a cell. Well, that must be a cell she's from. No? A girl on the ice? Sounds like her, yes. March 51. I got a call from the repeater station. Someone has tried to access the radio computer in our old office in Martinez. Can't do anything about it. The storekeeper still doesn't want to let me inside the building. Thinks I'm part of some kind of curse. How Martinez of her? Well, that could be me. I mean, I was the one who broke into that radio computer. The storekeeper must be present. I knew it wasn't a good idea to meddle with the machine. No, no. It was a great idea. You're learning things. This is how you learn things about machines. March 51, a new two meter aux cable. Noodles, crackers, ping ping energy drinks, water, toothpaste, gum, also some canned air. Your reading is interrupted by the sound of the oh, church shit. door opening. A strange woman makes straight for the radio computer. Breaking into my radio computer, I see. She glares at you, she holds the off button for several seconds, the machine reboots. Yes, you are breaking in, but not into her radio computer. You're a master circuit bender. I do apologize for the intrusion, madame. We are with the RCM, you see. We're on a side case representing certain music venture organizers. Well, you won't find any music venue organizers here. She barely looks up for the keyboard. Do you hear the machine work back into life? It's just me and my computer, and it has been this way for weeks. Now, please give me some room. I need two seconds to see that you haven't destroyed anything. We should talk to her after she has rebooted the machine. Give us some time. So what's this up? In white, silver, and apricot faience, the young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall, oval-faced and sad, a dark and radiant majesty. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. Cradled in her arms are a pair of glowing lungs, clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. You should kneel. No. Cold wind seeps in from the crack in the glass. Snowdrifts cover the floorboards at your feet. Above, you feel her multicolored eyes on you, inspecting you. Look up. The woman looks down at you, standing there. She towers among her followers, architects, laymen, courtiers. There is a sad smile on her lips and a glint in her green-blue eye. Of what? Compassion? Remorse. She acknowledges the passing of someone who is still alive. It's, pos it's not possible to live. As that great and desperate thought passes through your mind, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to shoulder. Your fingertips touch your chest four times as you stand in the apricot-colored light of the window. Above you, the woman still smiles, her distant smile. Sundered by the crack in the glass. 
This is Dolores' day. The old woman in the village was right. This must be the Dolorean Church of Humanity in Martinez, or the small Pinewood Church in some records. Do you know the place? It's a minor landmark, not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. It was built not long after Revachol's founding, 300 or so years ago, by first-generation settlers. On the coast of an uninhabited archipelago, where only animals had roamed before, in the wild reeds. What else do you know? There used to be seven stave churches on the coast. Les Setsa, they call them, the Seven Sisters. Only one remains. The rest were burnt in the revolution or used for building materials. We should be respectful here, although the building appears to be deserted. I do not believe we'll find anything connected to the lynching here. Something else, perhaps? <laughs> There's a machinery lying around. Respectful? Is the lieutenant a follower of DeLoreanism? Uh, respectful? Yeah. Yes, we all are. Oh. Her name, body, and rule are synonymous with humanism. The laws we enforce are DeLorean in origin. Hmm. The woman looks by in silence, smiling enigmatically. Didn't think you were spiritual. It's not spiritual. It's constitutional. The DeLorean system does not demand faith, only accordance. How do I know this much about the mother of humanism? It's a mystery. That was an 80, sprinkled what? with self-pity and regret. For some reason, unknown to your mind, looking at her delicate oh, eyes so nice. makes you feel like you're ready for drowning. All you know is, this is the young mother of humanity, and that you should go. Do something else. Escape her sad, worry-worn look. Try to reconstruct the uh, glass. A jigsaw of broken shards falls into place in front of you. A ghostly reconstruction of the stained glass window. Before it was shattered, there was an older woman beneath the younger one. And a text. A light motif below them both. Who shattered it? What shattered Unknown. it? Unknown. A motor carriage? A gunshot? Someone falling into it? Or maybe just hooligans looking for something to break? Here's the older woman. The escutcheon on her throne says... Irene the Navigator. She is depicted as an older woman wearing thick-rimmed eyeglasses, holding a golden rites apfel in one hand and a scepter in the other. This is the queen her innocence day advised. Above, she herself is whole. Small figures of wise men, common men, worshippers walk up the stairs to stand at her feet. Secret servicemen, thirty years, Stand in a row, guarding her. It must have taken years to produce this work in all its dizzying detail. Um, what about the motto? motto? Below both women, in luminous black letters. Après la vie, mort. Après la mort, la vie de nouveau. Something, death, death, life? And then, along the left side, après le monde. La Gré. Après le Gré. Le monde de nouveau. So. Something the death, something death, something life, world, the. Something After life. Yeah, death. there we go. After death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. This is the great light motif of that humanism. Makes sense. A summary of the effect. Of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, on human thinking. Sorry? A tremendous sea change akin to finding life after death. Could these words be the password that unlocks the filament memory? Lieutenant, this used to say life after death, after... Death? Life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. This exaltation is common in Dolorian sacralism. In the early years, it was even incorporated as the RCM slogan. No more, however. Why? It was deemed subservient to use a strongly moral intern related motto. We are already suspected of bootlicking. The sentence was also seen as too feminine. It was a macho thing. So what's the motto now? Justice, union, prudence, and force. Cool. Ice cool. <laughs> I 
Right, that's the mother fun. of humanism towers above you. Uh, a wax painting on the crack. Up so uh, two points, got that one. What is it? The woman's still hunched over the keyboard, gently innovated by the power machine. Don't break it if it did I? No, you just printed out my personal log and wasted some paper. It doesn't does not look like us being lost to it. Uh hey, are you the uh, lead programmer of um Real and Tebbit by any chance? Yes. Or no. Not anymore. That project is dead. She doesn't seem surprised to be recognized. Rather sad. Something passes over her face before she straightens her back. Sorry, but who are you? What are you doing here? I am Sona Lukkanen Kilde, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident and RSA radios. I have over 16 years of programming experience, and I'm proficient in both Vox and Orbis languages. If you're not here to hire me, I don't really know how I can help you. She turns back to the terminal. Did she say over 16 years of experience? She must have started programming when she was still a teenager. That still doesn't answer what she's doing in an abandoned church. Have you seen the <clears throat> crab man? No. There was a room? Yes. Doesn't seem like a word, man. No, you're right. I'm not. A boy strolls off and spreads over the ticket to the machine's printer. Why are there so many machines around her? I brought them here. These are my machines. Please don't touch anything. Uh, why'd you need the antenna? I use the AR1 as my RAIN prefix processing unit. RAIN prefix, that's uh, your radio computer, right? Mm-hmm. And the antenna is uh, processing unit? Yes. You really don't know anything about radio computers, do you? Uh, not really. All right. Well, all radio computers perform operations up on air. So in order to gain more processing power, you need to invest in a good antenna. And the R1, that's a good antenna? I mean, we know what, what on the air is. I guess it is. So far, I've been quite satisfied with it. Martinez is an unstable region with bad coverage, and the operation has been surprisingly stable. But it's not the cheapest one on the market. So I wouldn't recommend it for your regular red tape operations. Fraser 1000 is a foolproof line for civilians. Anyway, you should do some research before you decide to buy anything. Ask around, compare the prices. There are many milieus dedicated to that sort of thing. Fine piece of advice before rushing out and getting anything. Look into it. Don't just read what's in front of you. Um, what are you doing? I'm working. The machine seems almost alien with its pulsing core. The light casts in her face in a strange shadow. Working on... Could you... Could you just... Shh. For a moment? Or get to the point. I really need to focus on something. What are the balls, sir? They are connected to my rain prefect. Whatever you do, just please don't move them, okay? Thanks. Sure. Short and terse. There you have it. Whatever she's using them for, they're hers. Isn't your rain prefect really a to make exclusive for the government use? So you do know something about computers. You're right. Prefect is used mostly by the government peeps. So you work for the government? No, I don't. So much of it. Because I needed something good for my investigation, and Rame Civic is widely agreed to be below all standards. So I had to upgrade. Besides, owning a Rame Prefect isn't such a big deal anymore. No, actually, it is kind of a big deal. You don't see Rame Prefects in every police department, for example. How'd you get your hands on it? I know a friend of a friend who used to freelance for the coalition. I was actually aiming for the military grade Rame Rational series, but couldn't find one. Prefect is mainly based on the same technology as Rain Civic, so it's kind of a ripoff. But it does have better compatibility with newer antenna models, so I won't complain. Okay. Great. Uh, what are you doing? You really like those questions, don't you? I'm a police officer. It's my job. I'm conducting scientific research here. You can't throw me out. What research? I'm looking for the location of a two millimeter hole in the world. Okay. Wait, what? <laughs> She's looking for a disruption in the radio waves. That's what her personal log said. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. Is the hole connected to the data loss in your journal? Yes, that's what led me here. But I suspect it might be something a bit more complicated than that. Hole in the world? What's that mean exactly? Exactly. What does 
it mean? Up to now, it has been impossible to say what it is because it's impossible to measure nothing. There's something frantic about her. She lots of gaze with you, with you. Eyes shining like pearls. What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? She suddenly absorbed in the conversation, waiting for you to answer. Easy. You measure it by the world around it. Uh, I would probably suggest you measure it by collecting on the data of its surroundings, um, which exists. Exactly. Very true. That's what I've been aiming for. That's why I have those basins. I've tried using hydro transducers to record the silence. There we go. To find out where it begins. I don't know if that's a real thing or not, but it's something. It's, 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 yeah, it's plausible. Ha! Huh. Hydro transducers. So that's what those water basins are. Oh, Devices for recording sound through water. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. Mm hmm. She goes silent, staring into a circle of basins. It looks like a spot of ancient ritual. Um, do you have any idea where this hole might be connected? Uh, located? Somewhere underneath those roof beams, I assume. She looks up, eyes for the pierce of black sights above without much success. Only a faint crisscross of rafters can be made out from the dark. Most of the tower disappearing. Going out on the limb here and saying that's where um, Diego is drinking his memes from. Uh, why there? There's this place at the back of the church. A place where all audible vibrations seem to decease. I've named it the Swallow. And the higher you go, the less you record. The Pillar of Silence? Are you sure it's not just an architectural quirk? Maybe. But it's oddly close to the physical coordinates of the data loss that led me to this place. It's where the crab man lives. I know. You don't think he might be someone responsible? No, I don't. You say it's not going very well, why not? Because it's just trial and error. Trying to locate the Swallow, the exact point in space. And I don't have a... You know what? It would be really helpful if you could just stop talking and let me work. That's all I really wanted to know about scary too and the whole of the world. But now. Great. Thanks. Uh, how do you feel about annoyed, uh, annoyed dance music? What? I hate it. I bet she hasn't even heard it. Okay, wow, that was quick. Um, why'd you hate it? Maybe I'd have to be on drugs to get it. But to a sober mind, it just sounds like uninspired rock whipping. No idea what it has to do with either dancing or music. Right, right, but uh, imagine if you want a club for the dance music. This is about those speed freaks in the tent, isn't it? I've got some news for you. It's not a nightclub they want to build here. So what do you want to build it? Take a guess, why don't you? You said it would be nice. I can't believe they got you so easily. Go have another talk with those up-and-coming entrepreneurs, will you? Thanks. Good luck. I'm not coming in there. That's right, Mesa. Drug den! <laughs> right, so... Let's try this again. We don't roll fucking snake eyes on it. The mother of humanism. Yes, we all are. Her name, body, and rule are sin- It's not spiritual. It's constitutional. Press the button, that's the right. DeLorean system. Despite the there damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. The innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Perhaps the most famous human being ever to have lived. No amount of Commodore Red can wipe her sad smile from your brain thing. It has survived the deluge and haunts you still, and will haunt you forever, as it haunts all men. What exactly is an innocence? The highest category of historic individual, an embodiment of the world's spirit. A tyrant? In a way, an innocence is elected to office by the founding party, a precedent that has taken place a mere six times in the entirety of history. The legal system of the Real Belt is built from the ground up to accommodate an ascetic rule should it coincide with our time. An innocence is infallible. The decisions made by one are not decisions. They are inevitabilities. What would have happened anyway? Only accelerated, packed into decades instead of centuries. An innocence is a continuous compressed event, a sacred human being. 
It is an honour and a glory to live when one is in office. So not quite like Fallen London, where essentially the justice... I mean, what's called justices? Something like that? Yeah, the sun was won, and when um, Sun of the Skies begins, uh, Queen Victoria kills one with a very big gun. Um, is one another snack? No, we are alone. Okay, when does she rule? 300 years ago, in the wake of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, by explorers from the continent of Muwindi. She is, among other things, the innocence of inter-isolary travel and the connected world. What else do I know about her? Many things. You know she was a woman of the court, the wife of an influential Marchese, and eventually the principal advisor to Irene La Navigateur, Queen of Seren, modern-day Sir La Clé. Also, that she was gorgeous beyond beauty. Okay, was she smart? Terribly. Women of the court were expected to play both contract bridge and chess sufficiently well to prove an interesting challenge to a man. A simple grasp in matters of philosophy, theology, and science was encouraged. She was, by all means, a kept woman. It's a little sexist so encyclopedia, but I'm on. She made the most of her position in the anti-Delorean court, a court visited by the most prominent thinkers and artists of the day. In secret, she was becoming the era's preeminent philosopher of the state. A scalpel, a piercing gaze. She was an almost preternaturally magnetic and intelligent individual. To her contemporaries, she appeared out of time, a messenger from the future of the species. We all fell in love with her, head over heels. Even before she was declared an innocence, her influence was tremendous. How come? It was on her advice that Irene Le Navigateur sponsored a number of voyages into the Pale. A costly, often tragic endeavor, ultimately vindicated by the discovery of the new, new world. The piece of reality you're standing on. She was crowned two years after the first expedition returned, setting in motion what is widely considered the greatest era in history. The DeLorean era. Wow. Wow, indeed. When her innocence was declared and the queen she had advised for years fell on her knees before her, she was so overcome with emotion that her lungs started glowing in her chest. Bystanders reported golden filaments lighting the already sunlit chamber around her, clearly visible beneath her dress. That is why the lungs are the symbol of love for the cultures of the real belt. I want more. As did we all. The lands of the Mesk and the Occident, and even far away Supram Windy, altogether 21 of the 40 Mundial nations of the time, immediately accepted Innocentic rule, even before her crowning. Before her crowning? In a city called Advesperaskit in Vespa Messina, her homeland. The name of the city means evening comes, but it happened on a winter's morning with the canals frozen and slush falling out of the sky. She was dressed in a white and pearl dress on an emptied out plaza with the crowd far away. Already her theriers, the secret servicemen of the innocents, were worried about an assassination attempt. She must have been beautiful. Oh yes, she looked like humanity's young mother. A perfect mother, insultingly beautiful. It was as if her face and shoulders and hands were covered in a soft down of underfeathers. You know this well, very well. Midwinter snow was beating the cobblestones around her. A small attaché of officials stood by as her therriers placed a white gold wreath on her head. The crowning was mostly witnessed by secret servicemen. Then what? One of the men in this secret service killed her 22 years later. A young man who had come to suspect that Dolores Day was not entirely human, but something else. Like what? Something that had walked in our midst, watching us stumble for hundreds, if not thousands of years, until it decided to interfere, interfere in the course of our history. We were supposed to come up with this ourselves, the man was reported to have screamed at the innocents. Dolores Day was shot in the chest with a fowling piece, 
eight times. The man, thought to be insane, said he once touched her and her body had been unnaturally warm, like a furnace, and that sometimes, while on duty, he observed her forgetting to breathe for over ten minutes. This inhuman quality was witnessed by many others as well, glowing lungs and all. It is commonly attributed to mass hysteria and religious psychology. Mm. I don't know how to read that. Could be some form of um, machinery breathing for her, maybe. Uh, but as I said, this is this is very rapidly beginning to shift away from alt history and alt technology to oh shit, what is this place? And I fucking I'm in for it. I am here for it. It was a bit of a rocky start, but we are here for it now. Um, was there something terrifying about it? Terrifying is a term too emotionally charged for your semantic memory, or what remains of it. But although she's often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Day, constantly surrounded by her therriers. She was the most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the innocences. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaigns she waged against the Mesk state. And then there were the resettlement programs. Here's the problem. There's more than one, but this is the one we remember the most of. Why is that? Anyway, what happened? The Mesk state tried to detach itself from innocentic rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerating into secularism. Okay. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Marguerite were problematic as well. Dissenters were suppressed by a military force she called the Army of Humanity. Interesting name. That suggests she was extraplanetarial. An alien, or something else that doesn't that suggests that she's almost toying with the idea that she knows she isn't human, because why would man call army the army of man? We're all men, and we're all humans. I mean, so why would we call why do we have the army of X if we're all X? Mm. Is she suggesting those who fight against it are not part of humanity? Yeah, that's the yeah, that's the other side of it as well. It's uh, us versus them thing. Which is very, very, very common propaganda. Yeah? Anyone who's seen a, a war speech will know that the first thing you do with any kind of populace is it's us versus them. Even nowadays with um, stuff like console wars and stuff like that and brand names and all this stuff, you're not with us, you're against us. There, there can be no sane intercourse about this and all this lot. You either love PlayStation or you hate PlayStation if you love Xbox. And oh my fucking God, play both if you can. Yeah. <laughs> this, this basically is just me going off on stuff. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb in icons such as this. She was also blonde, the blondest woman you have ever seen, with green eyes the color of the Pacific, Mare Interregnum. Little is known of her Marchese husband. It's as if he vanished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce yeah. Dolores Day to court. In conclusion, yes, there is something lonely, paranoid, and even terrifying that people seldom mention but feel when they think of her. This subtle terror is part of her iconography. Yeah. Lieutenant Yefrater, you've stood there for over five minutes. The lieutenant's calm voice echoes in the cold air of the church. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? She's not human. Okay. <laughs> oh fuck, sorry Kim. He takes off his glasses to clean them, which is basically a glasses wearer of oh fuck, here we go. Uh, then after a while he says, This church, the coast in general, we shouldn't linger here. This isn't a good place to get lost in. We should conclude our business and move on. Yeah, yeah, so we're good. We're good. Right. So, uh, more to say to me, do you? Yes, what is it? 
Oh, the, the swallow, yeah. you mean? What about it? No. Freight. No, okay, cool. Right, so... Do, do, do. Um, he's just gone, right? Let's head back to the uh, ravers then. I'm glad I cut that up. Um, thinking about bailing after I talk to the guys. Um, I basically started recording this about five minutes after I finished the other one. <laughs> I basically stopped, went over P, came back, so... Uh, yeah, I'm pushing it at the moment. Uh, feeling better, it's just... With the whole thing with my uh, ribs and the inflammation of them and all their slop, it's... Um, so long as I know what I'm doing and I'm not pushing too hard, it is getting better, but it is a very slow process. So I'm at least fucking it into it. So I think, I think having the game just take a step back and just blast it all off like that, that actually helped me a bit. Right. You. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? Nothing jumps out. What? Nothing out of the ordinary. Really? Because I could swear something's not adding up here. How about you get out and breathe? The air in the tent is too thick for you to think clearly. Check the church out. And? What happened? I don't know I want to talk about something else. Hmm. But do let us know if something checked. Goodbye, yeah, officer. Yeah, it's about to push me. I've just leveled, haven't I? Yeah, and I took it into um, Encyclopedia, so I'm going to do that check again. Ah! I'm trying to talk to, um, uh, see if that adds it up. The shaggy-haired girl kneels on the sea ice. She looks up as you approach. So you talk to my associates, right? Are you going to help us? Uh, can I ask some questions With the first? church, I can I mean. Question, yeah, can I ask some questions first? Shoot. Um, the other time we went inside the church, what'd you find there? Oh, that. You're not going to believe me. There's no point in me telling you. She's less prone to blurting out crab man than the others. We'll see. Try me. Okay. I went in and I saw a woman next to one of those machines there. Noid calls it a mainframe. She was dressed like someone who's been raised by their grandmother. You know, strange old clothes. Had this absent expression, didn't say anything, just stood still. Okay. And then, you know, right behind her, a man crawled down the wall. Upside down like a crab, down the church wall. I think the woman didn't even know he was there. He was completely silent. He stopped right before he got to the floor. Then just hung there like that, looking at me. Right at me. I fucking turned around and walked out. End of story. Like a crab, you say? But that nod, his face is like so. Yeah, I've seen him. You saw him? Does it mean that you went in there? Did you see the other spooker, the one in Grandma's clothes? Yeah, I've talked to both of them, yes. Good, so you believe me. You should go tell this to Andre. He'll know what to do next. I don't know about your associates. My associates? I haven't got much to say about them. Just answer the question, please. Sorry. I just don't tell people about my friends and who they are and so on. I don't provide information on them. To the cops. Um, what about yourself? Me? I'm a silver bird. Uh, okay, cool, I'm a dragon. A silver bird. Feels strangely familiar. Was it an expression? And if yes, then for what? Then your mind slips and... The thought is gone. Okay, cool. Um, I'll ask later. Don't know what makes you think it'll be any different later, but... Even the birds have been nodding to the music. I saw that shit. I saw that shit. <laughs> Probably just an animation sink up there. I saw that nodding. You. Be close. True, hard, full, car. Is it? It's hard car. You're just going to keep saying it's hard car, are you? Skip a D, skip a danger. I am the rearranger. The close. True, hard, full, hard car. But is it? I mean, really? Yeah! 
This young man adds a capital G before the H in his Yags and Args. This produces a guttural Gottwaldian accent and makes him sound more animal, more in it. Or maybe it's not Gottwaldian. Maybe it's Oranese. Probably an homage to Oranier, where Arno van Eyck is from, judging by his name. Could you be listening to an Arno van Eyck creation right now? So this is the famous Arno van Eyck I'm hearing. You know about him? He moves his mouth, but sound doesn't come out. His eyes are like silver saucers. So you're friend of speechless. You know Van Eyck? Uh, your friend has still mentioned him. Good, good. The advent? Fuck. The clothes. True, hard, hardcore. Yeah! This young, or maybe it's not. The Y to the E to the A 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 to the G to the H to the exclamation mark. Yeah! One, two, three, four, five. One, two, fuck me. He missed one A. Wait, did he? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, Three, four. No, he didn't. <laughs> Braid? <laughs> Mr. Day there. I mine with six A's. So you have to do it too. I'm the hard rhymer, the track attacker, the mic enforcer, the six checker. I am the law. The close. True. Hard. Foot. Hard. Hard cut as a mega. Right. Here comes the. The club true, hard, hard, internally coherent. All car, all right, yeah. Please tell me exactly what you're doing. Gotta get the people going. I see. Yeah, request. I want everybody as close to the stage as possible. My fucking mouse. The club true, hard, hard, cut as internally coherent. All car, gotta get the people going. Why? I'm the party boy. It's my job. What's the party boy? Hardcore party 25 7 beyond the winter's orbit style. There is a place far away in Cutler, beyond a certain latitude known as Winter's Orbit, where there are 25 hours in a day. It is a tremendously cold place, abandoned to drunks and failed rock stars, full of Etonite, depression, and half finished ski flying hills. The Suru live there. The close. True. Hard. Full. Car. H hard car. Internally. Ca All car. All right. He furrows his brow. Hard car. Ah. But no, seriously, I'm not worried it isn't. The question is, what is the question? That would have been good if I'd asked you a question, but I didn't. I was just idiotic. But there was a question? The cloud. True. Ha. Ha. Internal. All car. All right. Gotta get the people. Go ah, yeah. That's fuck. God damn this fucking. The clouds. True. Dynasty ha, Warriors ha, ha, bullshit. Internally. All car. He furrows. Ha. Car. The question is, but there was no question. Ah. The cloud. True. Ha. Ha. Car. Internal. All. He furrows. Ha. Is it though? But is it? I mean, really. The question is, what is the question? No, but seriously, I'm a bit worried it isn't. He rides above his head back and forth once more. Don't be alarmed. Everything is okay. He isn't actually worried. Everything is still super hardcore. What he probably means is, it could be even more so. Since you're worried, what do you think's wrong with the music? There's nothing wrong with it. I'm still in love with the hardcore. It turns all pencil us up. Sometimes I just feel like anodic music is in its infancy, you know? For example, take this Arno van Eyck jam I've been pumping for the last month and will continue pumping for the rest of 51. Isn't something holding it back from being hyper? He thinks for a moment that its expression clears. It's like it's only ultra. I think it's super hardcore, but you're right. It's not hyper hardcore. If anything, it sounds a bit proto, like it's not fully formed yet. You might be a moribund alcoholic and a failed cop, but you are pretty certain a thing cannot be both proto 
and hardcore. It's only proto, it's not hardcore at all. Wow, culture card. I think you might be right, but how could it become hardcore then? I know it in my heart, but cannot think it in my head. If this is not hardcore, how could anything be? That sounds like a question. I thought the question was, what is the question? No! This is the answer! What? Guys, there's something happening in his head. Oh yeah! He's doing it! But you're not. This is almost certainly a matter that surpasses the limits of reason. Brain failed me, I'm sorry. I know! So does mine! Wait, I just should have been something on the police. Uh huh. <laughs> I don't have a job to do. No. Um, it's more like it's a hint to you. Oh. Can't help it. I think I need something extra. Yeah! Are you a thought reader? No nation, but trans nation! Oh, no fuck war, me. but class war! <laughs> Does that mean you're a thought reader? Don't be a lunatic. Of course he isn't. Germania here just yells random things. Odds are, sooner or later, one of them will come off as fault reading. Yeah! Revachon Imperative! Unless you were thinking Revachon Imperative right now. Anyway, I've had a similar thing happen with eggs yelling. I know what you mean. Yeah, sure, you're right. I was talking about that. Hardcore Superstar! <laughs> you're a communist now. Uh, yeah! Yeah! Wait, is your real name, Jermaine? Dark Hard Hardcore! Jermaine Egghead! Um, basically, yes it is. Why are there lungs in your belt buckle? Lungs are for love! Good to know. Yeah! Yeah, we've we learned about that. Sure! You know it's Fuck in me. your lungs where the pressure should vibrate. In your heart that's alone. And in your solar plexus where the hits should land. So does every chordate animal. Can I can I just stress this? I fail at 80 to a 90% encyclopedia check, which is this character's like belt. Fucking hardcore roll on a 58 needs more bass, motherfucker. What? The young man makes a sudden move, like he's about to turn the volume down. Well, that would be ridiculous. And a melody, you know, a good melody is what makes the song really stick. So that you don't have to, you can't get it out of your head anymore. Wow, okay. We should start with the melody. But where would we get that stuff from? I don't know, I was thinking you don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know anything about a nodic music. I'm just the party boy. I get the people going and say it's hardcore. I don't really have time for this. Oh, <laughs> okay, I get it, man. The party goes on! Goodbye. Alright! Why does art inspire you so much? It does, yes, but what is art? Excellent question. Art is a diverse range of visual, literary, auditory, and performative creativity. It's an expression of imagination and technical skill. Additionally, it's history, criticism, and pure enjoyment. In short, Art is the highest form of human communication, representation, narrative, emotion, and agency intertwined. What do you even fit into the art world? I mean... Have you looked in the mirror lately? To be honest, you have the exact features of the mirror <laughs> with that wild yep. hair and those clothes. Perhaps you should try to write poetry someday and critique architecture. <sighs> Both at the time, and say, hey uh, guys, is this true? And probably get about like, six people going, yes, but also shooting me in the face. Um, hang on, so is architecture also art? Of course not. It's autism, box drawing, masturbation with a ruler uh... and a sextant, or whatever they use. You should demean and criticize the genteel institution of architecture while extolling the virtues of the pure arts. Hang on, what about music? Is that art? Only the most experimental kind. I guess I have been being critical lately. Yes, you seek substance. No vapid representations and reproductions of social mores as made manifest in stuffy biennials. <laughs> We're talking real, living art here. 
become the art cop. Half art critic, half cop. Wait, but I don't... But don't I have to be like 100% cop to get the cape finished and all that? Quit being so indecisive. What are you going for here? Some kind of indecisive and camp aesthetic now? Strike a bold shape here. Go art or go home. Look, I, I can't risk another cop owner version at this point. Go away. Bravo. Continue. <laughs> then, the mediocre and vulgar epigones of the world. So what if everything is incomprehensibly shit and you can see it? Take no responsibility. <laughs> the war against Braid and deciding my combo type continues. This was a good call. That guy probably thinks forensics is autism too. Yep. <laughs> it's like, you had me right up until the point you called art detection isn't art. Unfortunately, it can be. Hi again. So, uh... Oh, uh, yeah, logic, right. Goodbye, officer. Yeah, uh, architecture is its own form of art because um, it might not be like the sort of, like, I don't know, the character. Uh, that was a quiz show feck up right there. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio and Da Vinci. Uh, it's not quite the same thing as that. Um, like Leonardo Da Vinci and all this stuff. I should really have got here three hours. Um, tattoo. Basically, um, I mean, look at certain buildings um, and how it changes throughout the time. It's its own form of um, expression or this stuff, so you can be arty, you can be arty with it. Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. What's on your mind? Empathy. That is a really. Why did I even roll that? Oh, I don't know. Empathy. Logic. That's one of the monitor. I think that's it for the rest of it. Yeah, these these are gonna help me. Yeah. Just hit it with these on. Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. Sure. What's on your mind? In his eyes, an our familiar longing. Flecks of brown and gold. Familiar how? It's hard to say. His gaze wanders southwest. Down the street that goes beyond the horizon. What's in the southwest? Excuse me. He emerges from the reverend. A flinch jolts his frame. The question has touched a nerve. Hell, I get longing. I felt something similar since I woke up. Man, I don't know what to say. Not much anyone can do. There's no helping in absence, you know. I miss my family. They're all I have. My wife, second kid on the way, waiting all the way in Diora. And here I am stuck in this shit, so far from home. Diora? Diora of the Seven Seas. It's on the other end of La Caillou, pretty much. On another island called Laurentide, off mainland. We've got a little place there. Can almost hear my kid laugh when it snows. What's it like to miss someone? What's it like? Good. And bad. An ache that brings you joy. Smells woman. I think of them a lot. I dream up these silly scenarios in great detail of living with them. It comforts me. Oh, to the long distance, um, lorry worker. What about you, cop man? You missing someone? No, it's scarier than that. You're pursued by a hunter, smelling of apricots and sorrow, and the past. <laughs> I miss my gun, I lost that. Uh, am I? <sighs> no, I feel hunted. Hunted? By what? Shadowy figure it into me as the ex-something. An ex-wife? The pain burns in your chest, radiating. The crown of Arthur is on fire. Whatever it is, one thing's for certain, it's not my ex-wife. Still, a shadowy figure. That sounds pretty bad. 
I hope that doesn't happen in my marriage. For some reason, sire, he pays no heed to your objection. Continuing instead as if it were your ex-wife. Strange. <sighs> Don't worry, I'm, I'm, I'm certain about it's ever going to happen to your marriage. Yeah. In marriage, you never know if you're doing the right thing. I hope we're doing our best to keep ours together, but anything can happen. Look, man, thanks for this. It's nice to talk to someone. I know it wasn't easy to ask, so... I hope you find your way through your own troubles. Seven Abba. Sometimes you just need to tell someone that... You, know, you don't be a shitter and go, Oh, yeah, you're totally gonna ruin your marriage. Inside, you see a set of stereo oh, God, levers, that a radio microphone, a pull-out no, toolbox, damn and the soft glow of... Oh, yeah. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Uh, any luck on the armoured? Yes. I got the mercenary's name and a few biographical details. Are you ready? Sure. The lieutenant leans in to listen. Shoot. Notebook in hand. Shoot! That suit of armor was issued to an Orani citizen named Elis Cortenaer. That's E-L-L-I-S-K-O-R-T-E-N-A-E-R. Exact date of birth, unknown. He was signed into the Lelystad County Neonatal Care Unit on 28th of February, 09. So, we have a name. Okay. Neonatal Care Unit? He was found as a newborn in a leaf compactor near an abandoned farm. He spent four months in the Neonatal Unit, survived apparently, and was assigned to a foster family at two. <laughs> It'd be a real shitter if he didn't survive, wouldn't it? This is what the ICD knows about him. He was raised by foster parents, entered the East Brand Military Academy in Vredefort at 17, then served in the Oranese forces till he was honorably discharged in 41, just a year before the Seminese conflict. Honorably, okay. Then the armor followed him to Seminine, or at least I assume it did. And that's it. There are no records of his employment in Crenel, or any of its other incarnations, or him even entering Ravachon. Yeah, that, that checks out. Wait, hang on, he was found in Lucan Butter? It's a garden tool used to press leaves I know what a... Cubes. It's a detail the hospital had. The only detail in these files. So I thought it would be good for you to know. It is. Thank you, Alice. Uh, any information on foster parents? None, officer. Sorry. So we only have to connect to him to Cornell as the armor. Even that is a small miracle. These organizations usually double-check their inventory. Thank you, Alice. Great work. No problem, Lieutenant. Nice. Well, we have his name in the service record now. The name? This is very good. Elise Cortenard. Sometimes police work is about human dignity. About giving back names to anonymous victims. I'm glad the inquiry was helpful to your investigation, officer. Did you have any other questions? No, we're good. Cheers, Alice. Fucking legend. 57, over and out. In hey. the cabin, you see. Oh, no, 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 but the fucking over. Right. So, right away, let's go and have a look at the. Where's the photo? An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso of the hanged man. The pattern still kind of has an ethnic feel to it. Gone. For you to discover someone who knows it. Yeah, okay. Let's get the... Actually, not that bad at all. Those glasses. I don't like those glasses. That looks stupid on me, I know, but... <laughs> It's either that or it's the um, Harry Potter cop, which would you prefer? Uh, 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 right. Um. So. What was that check? Andre was the. Under with logic, okay. Can I have logic anymore? Oh, I absolutely can. Alright, so we'll go try that in a minute. Um, while we're down here, what was um, the Hardy Boy one? Because I know you're. I know that's behind the check, and I fell. Was it logic? 
I believe it's logic, and I just levered it up twice. So let's have a flip around here. Okay, I forget to put those on. Get those on. Logic. That's two, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we're good for this. So let's have a go at this one. It's you again. What is it? So she's not in the church. I thought she could have been in the church. I think it could be the bunker. Bunker's the other option. A sudden flash of lightning in your so. near cortex. The hostile cafeteria is lit by its airy blaze. Floor plans, bullet trajectories, oh, yeah. webs of human emotion, all channeled into a single thought. Why are you so sure Ruby didn't off him? So that's what you were squinting at. You were trying to come up with a theory, weren't you? That she did it. Yeah, he was cobbling together shit so he could put her away. It's RCM... 101. Well, let old Titus set your mind at ease then. She didn't do it. She was here all night. Sunday night, 11.30 to 12.15. She was here all that time? Yeah, with us, drinking, near the stage there. Uh, didn't go out for fresh air, Smoke? No. That's a lie. You know that's not the case. All right. She took a fucking leak, okay? For one moment. Maybe went out, too. She has a complex operation to run from her lorry. She's a busy girl. Always has been. Oh! There's a, yes, there's a lorry with a locked door. This complex operation is probably yes. something illegal. Near the gate. Just because she was gone for five minutes doesn't mean she magically got to the roof and shot the Merc. I've been through this. It's not plausible it could be plausible actually it's not i mean upstairs upstairs shoot down yeah he's been through it that means he's suspected her too that's the other takeaway as well yep all right we're in we got ruby unaccounted for sometime during the window this was crucial now let's place her on that roof you do agree you do agree the shot came from the roof right why not you can't draw a straight line into Clausius' window from any of the surrounding buildings. Not from what I know about Martin A. Yeah, as I said in the opening of the uh, last part, that was the fuck up I was making when I was accusing the uh, noble. Uh, not the noble, the, um, the, 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 the diplomat. Maybe from the coast. But like I said, I've been too busy dealing with you idiots. So no, I don't think it was a sniper. It was close up. Uh, it's about a 72% chance that the bullet came for the roof. 72%? There's a percentage and all. Where'd you get it from? Your guys in the lab? Definitely lie. The truth is not credible. Yeah, we have a lab in uh, Cronin we used to consult in cases like this. Wouldn't hurt to have one of those in Martinez. Still, all the labs in the world don't put her on that roof. How'd she get there? Climb? Uh, could have gone to it from somewhere inside the island? Uh, nah. The only way up there is through Klaus's room. Maybe there's more? What do you mean? How much do you guys know about this place? We've only been drinking here for what? Six years? How much do we know? Been thinking of getting wilding in racks. That is on my ass, boss. There you go. Tad it on his ass. We know the place. Uh, locked door in the kitchen and another on the roof. Have you been through those? No, but that doesn't prove anything. That doesn't draw anything out either. It's just two doors. We're not giving you Ruby for that. She's one of us. What if those two doors are connected, Eugene? Is that your name, Eugene? It is place. Good man. Good man. If they are connected, she could have gone to the kitchen, gone up, shot him on the roof, then come down. All in five minutes. How about that? Yes, she could have. This is one long shot. He is right, but yeah, 
He gets it. Yeah, he so he doesn't have it at all. Uh, skilled sandbow artist could have climbed the outer wall like a spider. Garbage. It wasn't a sandbow artist, Carl. I've been doing this for ten years. Let me give you a lesson. Boys. It's never a sambo fighter, and it's never a bullet-bending sniper. Or a ghost. It's never a ghost either. Don't worry, we've got better than that. Yeah, we have. Um, you know, it's the windshield back out of the world. All right. I'll play alone. Those two doors of yours. The winch connects them with some kind of dumb waiter. What winch? Where's the winch? On the side of the building. You can see it from the harbor. You want to be a lieutenant. You got to keep your eyes peeled. I've seen the winch. Fuck off, man. <laughs> so we've established... So have we firmly established Ruby could have been had access to the... Nah. Read the word, Cyrus. Um, have we firmly established Ruby could have had access to the roof where the man was shot from? Firmly. Try shit on a stick. All you've established is a possible route to the roof that you haven't found. And you haven't rolled out. And even then, a route doesn't put that bullet in the Burke's head. A gun does that. And oh, Ruby doesn't go. carry one. Phase two, murder weapon. Get a gun in her hand. If not that, then at least a shadow of a doubt. Just don't contradict yourself. If it doesn't sound like Ruby did it, maybe keep it to yourself. But what if you miss interesting information that way? The choice is ultimately yours. But... Guys, this is Ravishal. I don't get going around here. Anyone. Look, fucko. Ruby and I are pretty tight. She would have showed me the gun if she had one. She knows I love guns. Yeah, everyone knows Glenn loves guns. I don't know, Glenny. Ruby's a little secretive, isn't she? Wasn't like she told you every little thing. Look who's finally speaking. Ratty's been uncharacteristically quiet since you started theorizing. Maybe he has something to gain from implicating her. Classy says Ruby takes care of things. You can't do that with a gun and Revishal. We're about to get a Revishal. She organizes things. She doesn't whack people. That's not the kind of person she is. She's a talker. Fair response. It's clear this one is protective of her. Yeah. Easy now, Glenn. What he's trying to say is, people who don't have guns don't shoot people. You need a gun for that. And you can't prove she has one. Good response. You don't need to prove anything. Doubt is enough for now, and Titus must have some. Uh, I mean, there's weapons like these I'm going to run about, nice. That looks antique. A bell grave. It's inoperable. Where'd you get it? Uh, suddenly the bookshop was hidden there, with others just like it. Twenty, maybe thirty rifles, Titus. Also broken, but still, there were too many. And there must be other caches too. God damn it. We need to close that dump down for good. Okay. I see your point. There are guns lying around. Damn it. I thought we'd found all the old spots. Why was that still there? We just missed one. Ruby doesn't know this place, boss. Just these cops digging up shit. She runs this place. She runs our group. She doesn't know about hidden gun caches, which you guys have been looking for. You idiot. Uh, there's a small, about 30% chance that the shop came from beyond the roof. Yes, goddammit. I know what a 72% chance means. It means there's a 28% chance it isn't that. And 28% is no small chance either. Just making sure we are on the same page. It doesn't all fit. We are just sharing info, candidly. Uh, this is gonna hit me, okay. Um, like a pawn shot sold my gun to a lost, sold my lost gun to a woman. Maybe it could have been her? You lost your gun? You guys have been looking for it! <laughs> but I'm gonna take it back, not even laughing. <laughs> what an idiot! Tell me, did you lose it before the murder? Um. You didn't. And Ruby didn't use your lost gun to kill him. Stop thinking about your lost gun, damn it. You'll get a heart attack. This was merely a thought exercise. He did not lose his gun. 
Let's move on. Ah, thanks, Kim. Um, I didn't say I'd prove she had the murder weapon, just said we need to find her. I don't know, Cop. Why don't you find your lost gun first? <laughs> I shouldn't mention that. Easy now, Al. This isn't comedy hour. Titus, we're not seriously considering it, are we? Ruby wouldn't do this. Why would she do something like this? Phase three. Motive. The last component. It's not why did she kill him, it's why did she organize the cover-up. And I suppose you have a theory on that. Could have been covering up for herself, Titus. Think about it. Why go through all that effort? It was her idea, wasn't it? The hanging. You went along, but she suggested it. She had, like, a fully formed plan and shit. Right when she came back downstairs. Really, Shanks? Closio wanted to talk to another girl, that's all. She was just the first one up there. I could have come up with that plan if I'd have been first. Thank you for, um, incriminating yourself there. Time for a logic demonstration. Right, okay, um, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Usually, uh, no, uh, Titus, let's assume that you killed him. You wrong thin ass here, asshole. It's a thought exercise, Titus. Think, you kill him, get up there, shoot him, get down. Would you prefer to go on trial with your man as part of a lynch mob or alone for cold-blooded murder? Alone. I don't drag my man into shit with me. If she used us... Then that's a serious violation of the Hardy Code, boss. But she didn't. She would never do that. Why are more of you defending her? This is fucking stupid, Titus. Glenn, I thought the same thing when she skipped town and left us in this shit. Oh, so he didn't rule her out completely. And she skipped town. This is good. You gotta see it. Things don't add up. We need to talk to her. Silence. He looks around the room. The old man in the corner nods. A very small nod. And a trickle of tobacco spit on his lip. Yeah. I see it. There's one more thing I've been wondering about. Ever since you asked me where she is. Add it to your list of suspicions, if you won't. Okay. I don't know. I don't know where she went she just got up and left got real scared too wouldn't tell me where however hard i asked want to know why shoot she was afraid i would tell you maybe she was right by now i probably would she knew there's evidence on her yeah and she knew we'd find it this is typical suspect behavior why fleeing is always incriminatory perhaps Ask her if you find her. It won't be easy, though. She made sure of that. When she go? Friday afternoon, when you first arrived. I got word the RCM was in town. Then she came in to see me. Told me she was leaving. That's when we had our little conversation. Do you know what she could have been scared of? I told you. You. Me as the RCM? No. You, as in the cop with the sideburns and the disco clothes. Ugh, I'm sorry. Why does everything flee at the side of my shadow? It seems you have that effect, especially on women. That. <laughs> right. That's the second one now who's trying to flee you. You know, when I first saw you limping here, I thought she was paranoid or sniffing her own supply. But now I'm not so sure. Uh, what else is she telling you about me? She said you have a funny taste in clothes and that you won't stop. Won't stop, can't stop, baby. Oh, why? Sorry. Until you have something on her. She said she's heard of you from Jamrock, that you're a human can opener. That you play suspects against each other. Open them up. Like cans. And then when they're all empty, just move on. Onto the next can. Don't look back. Yep. Unless there was something you missed. Fucking hell. Titus, did he just... Open Angus up like a can? 
Yes, he did. Now, we can whine about it, whack him, or we can go on with our lives. I'm having a go on with our lives kind of day, Al. How about you? Silence. He nods. Uh, is that tricky? You are insistent. Anything else? Anything? Yeah, there was something else. She wouldn't tell me, though. I could see she wanted to. It was burning on her lips. This cop, Titus. This cop, he. But she was too scared. Any clues? She's not far. We know that much. She didn't take her lorry, so she's on foot. Bring him back up the bunker again. Good fucking luck, man. She knows this place like the back of her hand. Oh, so now she does know this place. Her. You're flipping. He's, telling, he's a pathological liar. 100%. Because he, he's flipping. Because it's like, oh, she doesn't know shit around here. You know, oh, she couldn't possibly have known about this route up the back in the whirling or the guns and all this stuff. But now she knows the place like the back of her hand. Yeah, yeah Elle. And we won't either. She's not really a hardy candidate anymore, is she? She's not, Glenn. Uh, have you looked? A little. On the coast. Where have you looked for her, more precisely? More precisely? On the coast, past the water log. She's not here, so I'm thinking she's there. Who's doing this looking? They're all here. Uh, you're all here. Who's looking? Lizzie needed some air. So she didn't go to tell Everard. No one goes to tell Everard anything. He knows what he has to know. Fast. It's called a radio, you believe. The gardener may have played you a game when she stormed out. She has her own plan. Any ideas where I should stop? Sure. There are some shit houses there. A cinder block town. The fisher folk there refuse to unionize. So, that's one place we haven't looked. I hear they have a shack where junkies sometimes crash. Time for you to step up. We will start there. One more question. What does Ruby look like? Boyish. Hair's red. Dyed. She looks like a lorry man. Isn't that the girl with the saber? Well, it's not much to go on. It'll have to. Sure. His grip is firm and reassuring. Like holding a piece of unpolished granite. It's the game and the game has been played. Not just granite. Tightly packed RCM sergeant material. You should be a cop, Titus. When are you gonna get it through your dumb head? I already am. I just wasn't sure you were. And he still isn't. People aren't afraid of good cops in the way Ruby was afraid of you, he thinks, then turns back to his men. How can a bar be out of Vermouth? Right. Again? I can't believe this shit. Vertical. Bye! What was the one thing I was gonna put him doing? Oh, yeah. Uh. Do I have this Oh, I right, right, it's open. Uh, the sunglasses. Spirit to call. Horror instrument. I could fit the instrument, but that one's open, so we don't need to do that one. No, that's the one I've. No, it's not her then. What did door? That's one upstairs, isn't it? Yeah. Uh. That's logic. Spirit day call suggestion. Thank you, Pamela. Well, we're ready to see Spirit call. Oh, I can't. Uh. 
Well, hello. Someone seems to have found himself a bottle of alcohol. Here's where the magic happens. What a solid can of mass-produced piss water. Well over 10% alcohol in this so-called beer. Pop it open before it gets too warm. Wow, the gods of mass production have made this alcohol container laughably easy to open. Donald. Fine, we're not worried. You'll crawl back to this bottle soon enough. We'll give you another chance. Booze always gives you another chance. I mean, sure, but yeah. I'll have to look into that. Right, uh... It's the door upstairs, isn't it? See if we can get this open before you start looking around. Because I want to see what's back there. Because I'm now I'm in, now I'm intrigued. May check in with her. See if there's anything to do. I don't know why I haven't. Oh, I can have a look through there. I guess. Give us, uh, give us a whack and then we'll try something else. Um. Hey, yeah, yeah. Uh. I don't think Ruby's done it. I don't think she's helping herself. I don't think she did it. Officer, what brings you up here in the? Oh, my God. The same small, heavy door. Right. Whatever. Oh, I can't. Damn it. Alright, uh, uh Let's go. Back here. Let's have a chat the Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. Have what you, can I help you with? Have you seen a uh, redhead woman named Ruby around the coast? Nay, I haven't seen anyone lately. Because she's blind, which you seem to have forgotten. Oh, right. Yeah. This is a sharp one. <laughs> she's being evasive. There was a murder in Martinez. She might be a suspect. We would appreciate your help. Would you now? I know how this world works. And it doesn't work when people tell on each other. This is like when that man locked himself in the woodshed. We just need to, we just need to help her to come out. No, it's not like that man. With him, we called you. Right now, you just arrive by yourself, like a raven plucking at the window glass. I see. You, you know something, but you decided not to tell us. There's not much to tell. People come and go. Now, was there something else? I see, ma'am. I hope you don't mind if we look around anyway. You should look around your shack. Maybe she's rented it out to others, too. Mm -hmm. Don't go in something by the window, though. I mean, it, she could have gone... It's either she's at the boardwalk or she's at the, um... That one spot. Oh, hello. As you look at the floorboards in this corner of the shack, it's clear one of them isn't quite level with the others. The edge of a floorboard next to it looks scratched. Side. Hollow space underneath the floorboards is dark and damp. You can barely make out the mixture of sand and sawdust below. What's in there? Nothing particular catches your eye. Looks like more reeds. There might be something hidden inside the sand though. Sure. You stick your hand in and start combing through the sand. Dry, not like outside. Fine dust. And then, something hard wrapped in paper. What is it? A small cylindrical object. Oh. A bullet. A nine millimeter bullet, to be exact. Fit for all muzzle loaders of that caliber. The floorboard doesn't care. But maybe the washerwoman does. You have enough to confront her with. It's extra ammunition. She's locked and loaded, 
ready to fight some cops. So Ruby's got my guns on the wall. Yeah. Ruby's got my gun. She's got a gun. Maybe she's trying to um maybe she's the pawn her about it. What's up, buddy? Yes. No. Nope. Just checking it. He knew you. Hi Our there. tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Can you please explain to me why there's a 9mm bullet under the floorboards of your shack? Damn that girl. She loves herself, Luke. And without anger, a long and harsh life has taught her not to buckle under pressure. A bullet? Yep. <laughs> the attendant turns to you and gives you a nod and turns to the woman. You didn't put it there, did you? She did. Gone and hid things in there? She's usually a good tenant. And not a stupid one either. Rent to the renter? Yes. I let my room to that ruby girl. She speaks slowly, wringing out a rag after a long and sound silence. The hands move into the water bucket. Water flushes over the edge. As I've done before when she's been in trouble or just looking for solitude. I've made it clear. We welcome all kinds of people here. When was this? She came last Friday, left yeah. on Monday in a hurry. What has she gotten herself into, that girl? When we arrived and then when the game began. That's for the police to find out. Right there. Please answer each question to the best of your ability. I'm sure we have a few. She's, you said she left on Monday? Yes, early with the dogs, around 8 o'clock, I think. She probably heard the Lieutenant's Kanema drive by and it woke her up. Kim, she probably heard like it did you. Kim, she probably heard you arriving. Yes. That is a downside of having a 130 kilowatt engine. It lets the bad guys know when you are coming. Ah, <laughs> uh, right. Uh, is the room exactly as you left it? I cleaned it, like I always do. Damn it. Uh, was there anything else there? No. Okay. The truth, sire. What is she like, uh, Miss Ruby? She's good company. Knows how to talk to an old woman. At my age, you don't get a lot of quality conversation. So I really appreciate that about her. Did she talk to you much during her last day? No, she was mostly silent this time. Kept to herself. What do you mean? She tried not to let it show. But I could tell she hadn't come to fish. Usually she likes to cross a few lines. But this time she mostly stayed in her room. Yeah, okay. Um, why did you mention the bullet in there? How would I know? She's a gruff one, but not violent. She doesn't go around toting a gun. She looks back towards her shot thinking. Where'd you go? I don't know. Further up the coast. She tried to leave quietly, but the hinges on that door screeched like a cat in heat. Woke me up. I heard her rushing in those heavy boots, heading up north. North, right. It's a peninsula. She might be trapped. You'll never find her, you know. She knows the coast like the back of her hand. You only just arrived. Oh, but my dear, I am quite the expert of looking needles in haystacks. I wouldn't worry about that, ma'am. We are persistent. So, the coast we go, then. Are you sure you would rather stay here? Get a nice cozy fire going in the heater? Seems like a better idea to me. The felled electric mural. You feel like you should go look at it again. Step closer this time. One thing, officer. If you do find her, please go easy on her. Just fine. Yeah, it's getting colder. She's a good girl. Whatever she's gotten herself mixed up in. And on cue, the snow rings in. So, this will be the dead name generator. Yeah, that birth. Date of yeah, birth power. generator. Take it from there. My god, that picture. You were born in the year 07. In the last year of the commune of Revachon, right before it fell in the old military hospital on the ground floor, where people usually came to die during a snowstorm. The revolution had about one year left to go, 
and the fires were still burning bright. There were explosions in the blizzard. This was 44 years ago. You are 44 years old. The bloating might never leave your face, but beneath it, you still have some years. You still have some hope. Loading up, and um, minus one, okay. Nice. So... Did that raise my... my god. <laughs> Uh, let's stop there, right. Um... Let's go check this place out. Last one for today. Right, so we're not gonna go anything here, we're gonna go straight down here. Up past the phone. Then we'll do end of day stuff, uh, the next one, I think. Made a lot of progress in the case today, don't photos. I said we got plot that we're getting. So here. You see a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled. A slogan used to intertwine with the loops above the mural. A collapsed roof, broken windows set in walls that are cracking and will soon also fall, and the coastal breeze rustling and sighing in the remains of the edifice. Feld Electrical. How ironic. All these dark rooms. Feld Electrical. You only know them as a small company that makes ink cartridges. Looks like they used to be big. There's something in the wind. Sometimes the only way to go forward is to fail first. Could Ruby be in there? In there? She could. Or she could be in the identical room over there. Or in that boat shack. In that church tower, maybe. Why single out this one building? Even though you're sure you succeeded, all is quiet. There is no cold hand brushing against your forehead. No rustle in the reeds. The wind has died down. The ruin in front of you is silent as a tomb. What was I even attempting to do here? Trying to talk to the wind. The city, whatever you thought would happen, did not. And now you're just standing there with your hands fallen to your side. Is trying to talk to the city something you've done before? Is it in your secret repertoire? A trick for when you're out of ideas. It could be anywhere. How do we find her? How do we? I was really hoping she'd be in the village. <sighs> okay. She's probably north of the village, and this place is a peninsula. We already scanned most of the outdoor areas on our wild cryptid hunt, so we have an understanding of the geography, at least. And then there's the church. We've already searched that and can rule it out. I know it doesn't feel like progress, but exclusion is a step too. Yep. Anyway, we do it the old-fashioned way, sector by sector. Go over the whole peninsula, ask the locals, enter the places where we can enter first, like we did in the village. And if that fails, we don't find her? Then, if we're desperate, we can look where we can't enter. Bunkers, tomb drainage, this place, I'm sure it won't come to that. He looks behind them at the dark red box crumbling across the chasm. Walk the coast, the old boardwalk. The reeds. You can always come back here and talk to the wind again. Look where it already got you. An adventure awaits. An adventure on the windswept urban coast. And uh, that one can repeat. So, yeah. So, if we have a problem, we can come back here and check it. So, we shall... I can't jump in Let's go further up over here. We're going to go north the chair. Oh, hang on. Let's see you, Dot. That Dot that has not been squeezed. 
Yeah, we're gonna call out to this. This is tight up against the wall down here. Is that a pain? No. There's a slit in the concrete here. Just it. I try to remember where the um, other place is. Right, but no, we're going to. Again, I love the fact that I can only fast travel from certain points, but it does get a little annoying sometimes. But no, the village is not very annoying. Oh, there, here's a church, yeah. So, um, I think we'll start tomorrow by trying to get through to those tweeners' heads and uh, then resume our search for Ruby. So, I now gotta go edit two videos, yay. <laughs> but, as I said, I don't really do that much anyway, so I will see you guys later. This time I mean it. Doodles.